Brothers and sisters in the Dharma, may you all be well, happy, and peaceful. We are going to have a presentation of a Dharma sharing with the title, 10 Great Life Lessons I Have Learned and Benefited From. Now, the narration will be in English, while the text of the PowerPoint are in English and Chinese. Now, this is an important topic because there is very good Dharma where we can learn from in order to live a life that is more happy, peaceful and calm. Now, we are going to go over the PowerPoint slides and I will give the narration as well as the explanation and comments on the Dharma teachings. Now, before we show the PowerPoint, let me check the setup uh, to show that it is uh, okay. Now the setup uh, is all right. So now let us launch the PowerPoint. New show. Uh, now you see the cover slide with the title, 10 Great Life Lessons I Have Learned and Benefited from. And actually, these life lessons are Dharma teachings from the Buddha and they can benefit all people so that they will have less problems and also they will be able to cope better with all the problems, the conflicts and the trouble that all of us face in this conditioned existence. Now, it is important that we learn, understand, and reflect on the great Dharma teachings and also to practice them constantly, diligently. Then there will come a change in the way you see things, a transformation of the mind, and you find happiness, compassion, and wisdom arising in the mind. And when wisdom arises, then you will be able to live life more happily and peacefully. So these are the objectives of this presentation. Now let us now go to the first of the 10 great life lessons, which are actually Dharma teachings. Ah, this is now slide number two, and that's the first of the life lessons. Now, it is this. All conditioned things are impermanent. Don't covet, covet, crave for, attach, grasp, and cling. Now, you find we are in a conditioned world in samsara. And all things, all happenings, all events, all experiences in this conditioned world are not permanent. They are transient, impermanent, always changing. Nothing is permanent in a conditioned world like this where all depend on causes and conditions arising. So when we reflect and constantly contemplate on this teaching, examine very, very closely, think of the examples, then you find certain things happen in the mind. Now, you see that all things, including the plant world, are impermanent, isn't it? A plant, you know, grows and then uh, there comes a time where it will wither and die. 
and likewise also for animals and also for human beings and also for the inanimate things. Like if you have a car, you cannot expect the car to remain just as beautiful and shiny as you first bought it. Over time, things will change. It will wear and tear, it will rust, and it doesn't look so good already. It's a pack, isn't it? You look at all things, right? even a house, a bridge, a road, do not remain the same over the years. Some may take longer to wear off, but they will change. So it's a flux of things. So when you realize this, then you know we should not be greedy and craving very, very strongly for these things, like your, even your possessions. We can be lost. We can be stolen, right? So, or they can even just wither away. So when you realize this, that is the nature of all things in this conditioned world, then you would not attach or would not grasp and cling until you cannot let go. This will cause suffering. The actual cause of Dukkha, according to the false Four Noble Truths, is craving. Craving and attaching to things. So when these things are lost from you or separated from you, then you become very, very sorrowful. Like for example, huh? a person who has lost the wife, because everything is impermanent, we have to grow old, that is age, there will be sickness, and then there will be that. So there was a case huh, of this top judge, you know. Well, of course, he loved the wife very much, but the time came where the wife died. And he couldn't accept this. You know. The pain was so great, the dukkha was so great. So, you know, he would grieve on and on. You know, every day he would take out the letters, la, the photos, la, and so on. And the dukkha was terrible. He would visit the, her graveyard, I put the flowers right, so often. So this went on like that right, because he was grasping and attaching. He couldn't let go. So at the end of the third year, it's an actual case, you know. He just couldn't tahan the dukkha really. He put a gun at his temple. Right, I mean, at his forehead there and shot himself, committed suicide. So you see, it's so important we realize this fact of anicca. So seeing the reality of impermanence or anicca, may we strive hard to cut all mental departments and end dukkha. It's only when we can see this. Seeing is not just understanding intellectually. You know, everything is impermanent. Everything is impermanent. But when you lose something, then what do you find? That you cannot eat, cannot sleep. Right? And you are so troubled because you know it intellectually, but you have not seen the reality. A person who has seen the reality of impermanence, he can accept it. He says that is nature. And all is impermanent. Right? So, when we see this, then we will want to strive uh, uh, to work very hard, diligently. Uh, walking the Noble Eightfold Path so that we can end this unsatisfactory state in condition assistance. And actually, uh, when we cut these mental departments of greed, uh, and then we will see that we have the other two of hatred, anger, and then delusion, then you will arrive at the unconditioned state, the end of Dukkha. Cross the sea of samsara, you become enlightened. Otherwise, we will have to face all these dukkha in conditioned world. So this is something very important, a great life lesson that I have learned, and many also perhaps have learned. And really, this lesson has helped us to accept things, especially when they so-called go wrong. Actually, not that they go wrong. That's the nature. It changes. 
according to causes and conditions. So that is the first great lesson that I have learned actually. Now let us go on to slide number three now. Slide number three is the second of the great teachings. And it is on patience. Now patience is one of the ten perfections of Paramisa that the Bodhisattva or Bodhisattva, the Buddha-to-be, cultivates on the path to enlightenment. Now you find a lot of uh, Dukkha comes uh, and people get stressed up. You know, people get very, very troubled in the mind because of a lack of patience. All things will take time and things also will pass. Uh, nothing is permanent. So, if we don't cultivate, develop this very important virtue of uh, patience, then we will face with lots of problems. For example, you are not patient when you are caught in a traffic jam or you are not patient when you are driving along the road and you try to beat the traffic lines and unpleasant things happen. You may get involved in an accident or you may be booked by the traffic police and you will suffer by having to pay a fine and so on. So, you find the impatience is getting more and more prevalent. The young ones, you find, cannot even sit still for one minute, two minutes. They get very, very restless. And then they cannot be contented and satisfied with the things they have. You know what will happen? They will change one of the smartphone gamer. Uh, so often, you know, or even the game set uh, or iPad, the games and so on, because they are not satisfied. And then you ask them to wait for things. Little you know, children, they have no patience. They say, I want the thing now, now. Right? And if you don't give the kids, they will try to, you know, put up tantrums, create havoc. So they must be disciplined, you see, right from young. You wait. And some, you know, are so impatient, they will always cut cues and quarrels and fights can arise. So there are many, many incidents in life where people lack patience. And not only can it affect your mind where you become, you know, not at ease, not peaceful, always agitated, always, you know, maybe angry, anxious. You want it like instantly, you know. So you have no patience to wait. Just as a person who gets sick, right? Then he goes to see the doctor and then the doctor, uh, after examining him, he say, okay, uh, it's just a sickness and the medicine is prescribed. But he has no patience. Let's say he has uh, maybe a flu or, you know, something, uh, an infection. Uh, then the doctor prescribes an antibiotic course where you have to finish the medicine over a number of days. But after one or two days, uh, not even halfway through, you say, I'm still feeling so terrible. He has no patience. I say, that doctor is lousy. Lah. So he will uh, go to see another doctor. And then the doctor, maybe an unscrupulous one, prescribes very strong course of antibiotic. Very effective, lah, but it's not a good way. You are not letting your immune system a chance uh, to work and heal you. So... Very fast, ah, he says, very good. Right? This doctor gives very good medicine, very fast, you see. Uh, my infection or my flu or whatever goes off so quickly. That is not good. It's just like you have a mosquito in a room. Right? Instead of using wise ways to chase away the mosquito or read the mosquito in wise ways, you put a bomb in the room. Ah, the bomb kills her. Ah. The mosquito by destroy so many things, isn't it? Ah, so this is an example. Everything will come to pass. Uh, even the uh, sickness or so uh, will come to pass. Either you are going to get better or you're going to it's going to deteriorate and you're going to die. Right? This can happen. So when we are 
wise and see these things, then a lot of changes take place in the mind for the better. So patience is an important virtue for success. And likewise, also in our Dharma practice, many do not have patience and they give up. They say, oh brother, we want to learn meditation. Huh? Uh, we heard that it's very good, you know. There are a lot of benefits. Huh? I can cure sicknesses. Huh? I can be successful in the business. Huh? I can sleep better. Huh? And so on and so on. Not understanding the Dharma. So, after two, three weeks, uh, they will come, I remember, uh, uh, people like that, uh, they will come to see me and say, hey brother, you have given us some guidelines on meditation, but I've been meditating for three, four weeks, nothing happens, I don't get anything. I say, what do you want to get? Right? We are going to throw off things actually, and you require patience. Different people have different defilements, uh, uh, to the extent some are very serious ones, so they take more time, isn't it? So, be patient. So, we make that resolution, may we be patient in our enlightenment quest. We strive hard in order to be enlightened. And one of the very important qualities is patience. So, this is the second of the great life lessons. And these are just animated images so that, you know, you will not become so bored. <laughs> you have no patience to listen to all the yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, blah, 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 I like can say. Uh. So uh, that is this second grade Dharma teaching. Now let us go on to the, these are actually all very practical things. Now we go on to slide number four which is the live lesson number three. Now, this actually pertains to the moral law of karma. Right? What goes around comes around. Good begets good, bad begets bad. It's a very, very uh, simple way of looking at it. Right? Now, if you do something bad, evil, intentionally, it's bound to bring in the effects or the consequences sooner or later. Right? So, this is a very important thing many people do not realize. And then, uh, you know, some may even think, well, you see, this friend of mine does so much bad, but he gave uh, this uh, smuggler of drugs, uh, uh, or pusher of drugs, uh, wow, so wealthy, and he is so healthy also. Yeah, but they don't see things in a uh, wider context that karma stretches on to previous lives also. He might have come into the world with a lot of good karma, right? But it's a matter of time. If it doesn't happen in this life, then in the future life, right? Because he has done bad and accumulated the bad karma, isn't it? And likewise also, uh, good begets good. Which means if you do a positive, wholesome, Thing like dana service to others or even meditation then you find the vipaka the result will come sometimes uh, in the future life sometimes very fast i remember there was a case of two friends who love hunting you know right always wanting to go hunting you know for wild boars lah and then squirrels uh, or whatever, uh, musang or what. Uh. So one day, uh, one of them, uh, thinking that his friend was just at a short distance away, was a wild boar. No? So he shot at the friend, you know, thinking that the friend was a wild boar and killed the friend. It was an actual case, you know. So now you see, for that one who got shot, right, he was doing something we call unwholesome, killing, hunting, you see. So the consequence that came so fast, you know. Then he met uh, with the dead. Uh, you take the life of another being, so your life is also shortened. And the one who shot uh, also has done uh, bad things, uh, killing uh, animals and then killing the friend. Of course, he was not intentional, uh, but he had been killing animals. So a time will come, he has to face the uh, Consequence. So these are very important things for you to consider so that you will not fall into the trap of doing 
unwholesome things involving the mind, involving the speech, and involving the body. Three things of the mind that you have to be careful, right? Of the greed or the craving, and then the anger and hatred, and the delusion and the ego self. Now, these three, if you find, if you always you sustain in your mind and so on, they will have their bad consequences and the dukkha will follow, you see. So three things of the mind, you have to be careful. And then four things of the speech, that if the person intentionally lie and then causing others to suffer, a person who slanders or uses malicious speech, right? Uh, tail biting, uh, and then the person who uses the harsh speech, hurting other, other people's feelings, very foul speech, uh, rough speech, uh, causing pain to others. And that also is unwholesome and uh, bad consequence will come. And the fourth one is the gossiping. Gossiping and then uh, rumors are spread. And then you find that other people come to know of it and your gossiping is not only wasting the time, but it can have terrible consequences. So these are four things of the speech which are unwholesome. Then you have the body three things, so no killing, this is how we give the example, no stealing or taking what is not given and no sexual misconduct like adultery or rape. So you cannot escape this universal or natural law of karma. It's one of the laws of nature. You can say it's the law of moral causation. All beings are subjected to this law of karma. So the wise one will be very, very mindful and heedful not to do any evil, but to do all the good. Then you find he will get the fruits of the good karma and he will cut the dukkha until uh, if he eradicates completely all the mental departments, then he will be totally free of dukkha. He will cross the sea of samsara. Now, this is a very interesting uh, uh, animated clip. Uh. This person with evil and anger tries to kick at the dog to cause the dog pain and so on. Uh. So you find it's an unwholesome action and it gets the effect almost immediately, you know, right? So he uh, loses the balance and has a great fall. And some may even sprain the back or even uh, fracture uh, backbone and so on. Uh. <laughs> it's very interesting, I find. Uh. Okay, now let's go on to slide number five. Now, slide number five is actually the live lesson number four. It talks about the first mental poison or the mental defilement that actually causes dukkha. And it is greed. Or you can also think of the other terrible quality that associated with greed that is craving. These three things you find are very closely related. Greed, craving for certain things, and then attaching. When the person is very greedy and craving for things, uh, so uh, he may do, uh, he can do very unwholesome actions. I think you don't have to go far. You look at uh, what is happening right today. So many are corrupted. Why? Because they are greedy. They are already uh, millionaires, but maybe they want to become billionaires. They are so wealthy, really, like, you know, some politicians uh, or even other professional people. Due to greed, uh, they will do things uh, which you cannot imagine sometimes. You know? Cheat people, con people, scam people, rob people, all right? And they cause suffering to others. And it's just a matter of time we will receive the vipaka. That's why you find uh, in the scripture also, uh, it stated that people who are very greedy, right, a lot of attachment and craving, uh, they will suffer a matter of time. Their minds will be affected. 
they feel guilty, lah, remorse later on, lah, and certain bad things happen to them. And if it doesn't happen in this life, it can happen in future lives. They get reborn into the, uh, the uh, sorrowful states, lah, right? like ghosts or animals, you see. Right? So how do we conquer this? It's very important to practice this thing we call dana. Dana can translate as giving, generosity, charity, and service. And these are the wholesome actions which will generate good karma and you will get the benefits. Now here you see we have written dana or selfless giving is a meritorious action. It helps cut the ego self on our part for liberation. Now, one of the root causes of Dukkha is this thing called ego or self. You want always to please it, right? So, this obstructs your part in order to be free from Dukkha. So, this is a very important, is the first of the 10 paramis of perfections of Dana. Selfless giving. You find uh, there's so many people who are really exemplary. You know, uh, like Mother Teresa, you can uh, see uh, so much of dana work and service work uh, to help the poor. And here I've just put one example here. And then you see uh, it's giving. So the opposite, of course, is being selfish, being miserly, stingy, right? Always wanting, take, take, take and receive. But do not want to give, do not want to help, right? always thinking for his own interest. So, this is a life lesson that we have to learn. That if a person uh, doesn't practice giving generosity and service, uh, he cannot be truly happy. In fact, uh, I have also heard some monks giving talks. Uh, depression on the rise, you know, so one good thing is actually uh, to do dana. If all your life uh, you have been serving other people well and so on, then you won't sink into depression. You know, these people always think maybe maybe rooted in the self, right? Of course, there may be other causes as well. So this is a very important thing for you to realize. And that is the life lesson number four about the danger of low bar. Raga. Raga is last. Uh. Loba is greed. Uh, they will have the bad, painful consequences. So this is one great lesson we have to learn and we have to teach the young ones so that they will not fall into this very, very terrible trap. Mara, you know, always tempting you uh, with this trap. And once you fall into it, you find that... Uh, now so much trouble in the world. Uh, and one of the root causes uh, is this craving. Uh, uh, the craving is actually the fundamental cause uh, of Dukkha, uh, the greed. So now let us go on to the next slide, which is slide number six. Uh, slide number six, which involves the life lesson number five. It goes on to the second mental defilement or the second mental Poison that causes uh, lots of greed, uh, lots of pain and suffering. Now you find that today the world uh, is filled with anger and hatred, nations against nations, societies against societies, religions against religions, people against people, right? And this uh, will bring in lots of suffering and negative consequences. You can see uh, so many quarrels, so many fights and so on. Uh, even two professors uh, fighting over a car park. Uh, not long ago, I read a report, uh, maybe somewhere near USM or what. Uh, imagine, you may be very educated, but you so easily get angry thinking of yourself only so they can quarrel and fight over a car park also. Now, this anger is a terrible thing. It does harm not only to your mind, but it also harms your body. You know, a person that is hot-tempered, right, can, you know, succumb to a stroke 
or a heart attack and other parts of the body can be affected. So physiologically, it's not good. Uh, anger and hatred. You know, right? And then in terms of karma, this is a very terrible mental poison. So Achan Dhamma Mudo talk about the case. Some of you have heard his talks uh, about this lady who was very, very hot-tempered. Uh, uh, always easily uh, ang angrified. Uh, uh, very hateful. Uh, uh, ill will. Uh. So the trade-off was like this you know, all the while. So according to what I listened, uh, that just, I don't know, maybe just uh, one or two weeks or something like that before she passed away, uh, you know what happened? Uh, very shocking. Uh. Two Dracula teeth, uh, uh, the fangs uh, came up from the mouth, you know, the family members uh, were shocked, you know. Why? Now already you can see the state of mind is affecting the body already and it's an indication according to Achan Dhammamudo. Uh, they will, he will be heading for the woeful rain, uh, the rain of the hungry ghost or an animal. You see, right? Because of the mind state. So you see uh, this danger and you know of cases like this, then you will take steps to cut this anger. It's very dangerous. Right? There's a lot of Danger uh, in anger and hatred and ill will. And one good, uh, various ways have done postings already on how to check or control anger. And one very good way is to practice metta. Metta is loving kindness. You can do the meditation on loving kindness. Metta bawana, which is being taught in our association and practice also, even Sunday school. So this way, you slowly get rid of the anger or hate that uh, is very strong in you. As I say, it's poisoning the mind and the body. And definitely it will bring Dukkha to the body and the mind in this life and future lives also. And just now I gave you the example uh, of that lady uh, uh, where the Dracula tick came out on her dying bed. So let us uh, go on to the slide number seven. Now, slide number seven is the live lesson number six. And that is the third, and you can say the worst and the strongest mental poison of ignorance and delusion. Ignorance, not knowing uh, uh, the righteous things, what is right, what is wrong. But actually, in the scripture, or you go into the Dhamma teaching, is the ignorance of the four noble truths. Right. The Four Noble Truths. Huh? Now, there is Dukkha, the cause of Dukkha, the end of Dukkha, and the way to end Dukkha. Completely ignorant of this at all. That there is suffering and the cause, craving, uh, he doesn't know all those things. So that's why he brings in a lot of Dukkha to himself, not knowing the cause of the suffering. And doesn't practice to get rid of the suffering. And delusion, having the wrong views. And not being able to see uh, the things as they truly are. But according to the fellow's individual wrong views, his superstitious beliefs, his wrong thinking, his wrong uh, opinions, and his unclear drunkard state. That person uh, drinks until he becomes really deluded drunkard and does all the unwholesome things uh, or many unwholesome things. So this is a very, very terrible mental poison. That for example, you have terrorists, uh, right? They can even uh, kill a person by cutting the throat, no? just like you kill, uh, just like some people kill the chicken, I know it's horrible, uh, by putting a knife against the neck of the chicken and slaughtering the chicken. So you have people uh, that have this delusion, this false belief, you know, right? That if you do that, then my God will be very happy because this person uh, is of another religion, wrong one. Uh, so they become terrorists. Of course, uh, that is wrong view. Making others suffer. How can it be uh, wisdom? How can it be the right thing, righteous thing? It's delusion. The wrong belief, the wrong view. Right? So not being able to see things clearly, the things as they truly are. So when we have wrong views or you are not able to see things as they truly are, then you find 
this will lead to suffering. It's a root cause for spinning in some suffering samsara. Actually, not seeing the noble, uh, not seeing the four noble truths. Uh. Then uh, this will cause you uh, to go on and on in samsara, which will have the suffering. So it's the most important thing is to develop the uh, right view, right? Cut the ignorance by wisdom. And wisdom is not obtained just by uh, reading the books only. It might well, give you the knowledge for a start, but you have to listen and learn the true Dharma and then to understand it, to repeatedly go over, reflect and put into practice, discuss with people, meditate, contemplate. Ah, then the wisdom comes. In fact, all my postings are directed at this line, you know, right? To develop the wisdom. And having the right view is very important. Uh, you find that uh, people with uh, ignorance and uh, wrong views uh, do a lot of foolish things. Uh, uh, like even uh, fighting in, on the roads, uh, road bullies and all the stuff. Uh. Now let us go on to number... Uh, slide number eight. This is also one of the most important of the Dhamma, most important of the Dhamma teachings. Uh, that means the eight worldly vicissitudes. Or very easily put, the eight worldly winds. Now you have to remember that all of us in this suffering world are not free from these eight worldly winds or eight worldly vicissitudes. And what are they? They are happenings or experiences to us, to the central. Uh, to, let's say we take the more complicated to the human beings. All of us uh, will definitely experience this first set, pleasure and pain, happiness and sorrow. You cannot have a life that is always full of pleasure, happiness. Sometimes there will be sorrow and pain, isn't it? So when you have the pleasure, well, you are uh, you maybe you have good food lah, or you are able to go and shop the expensive clothing and everything. Oh, you feel very happy. Lah. There's a lot of pleasure, isn't it? Or you're able to get uh, you know uh, a smartphone that is very, very good, iPhone, what, 7 or 8, I don't know. Huh? They're very happy. But one day, something negative will happen. You lose your mobile phone, all right? Or maybe uh, you fall sick, all right? Pain comes in. Not all the while healthy, man. sometimes sickness comes. But when you have the pleasure, wow, you find uh, you're very, very happy. Lah. But what about when the pain comes? You cannot accept it. Uh, you think, why do these bad things happen to me? Uh, why like that? It's a nature, according to causes and conditions. So the person who can see this uh, first set of the eight worldly winds uh, will be more patient, enduring, tolerant uh, of the negative thing that can happen, but it will not be permanent. It will go also. Ah, so it's a very important life lesson for your mental peace and happiness. And then, of course, the second set, gain and loss. Wow, you know, when the share market goes up and then you have bought certain shares, wow, you earn maybe a few thousand dollars. You're so very happy. Uh, you know, maybe uh, you jump onto the ceiling uh, and so on. Uh, very, very happy. Uh, you gain so much from the share market. But what happens when the shares drop and you lose a few thousand? You cannot accept really that one. It can come, isn't it? Again and loss come together. When there's gain, there's loss. So what happens? Huh? Uh, you find some cannot take it and so on. They commit suicide. You have heard of cases. Uh, jump down from the uh, hotel high-rise building. Isn't it? And many, many cases. Huh? Uh, I have a friend uh, uh, who lost the money because according to this family friend, right? Somebody don't know how we drew from the ITM, uh, sorry, ATM card. Uh. I don't know how, uh, you know, they have uh, all sorts of uh, things happening. Uh. So she said that she never withdrew that money and then uh, lost one or two thousand, went to complain to the bank manager, everything. They said, no, everything is very clearly shown that you have withdrawn, but she insisted that she didn't, but you cannot get back the money. The record show it. So she could not accept that loss. And to cut the story short, uh, not long later, uh, she died. Because it, it, uh, the, the thing can affect your heart. Probably she died of a heart attack. Whereas I had another friend also, he's very dharma-based. 
he experienced a similar problem. You know, somebody, you know, somehow or other withdrew from his ATM. Uh. So, of course, you have to lodge a complaint, ask the bank to investigate. They say, no, everything. But then he accepted it. He could accept very well. He said, well, right, probably uh, the, the, the other person uh, uh, need the money and so on. He could even make a joke of it. Maybe it's my bad karma and so on. So, he could accept it peacefully. Oh, what about the times where he gained money? Maybe <laughs> he might have... Uh, 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 one in the but I call I don't know uh, but anyway other ways so he could gain money uh, from the bonus of his uh, boss in the company and so on uh. and likewise also some people uh, cannot accept blame criticism right so when people praise them wow you know very happy uh, the 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 tail uh, go up or so uh. uh, but when he is blamed wow somehow you find uh, Instead of looking at the mind or the state uh, that arises uh, when he hears the uh, blame, uh, the blaming words and uh, so on. Uh. So, wow, you know, the anger, the ill will, all those negative states uh, all become strong in the mind. You know, cannot accept it. Of course, praise are uh, very good. Uh. Then you find worse still, uh, this you carry on, you cannot let go and so on. Uh. And I also think about those things and cannot sleep. Even the Buddha, fully enlightened, uh, was blamed and abused. So, but he did not accept those things. So, you know, when we reflect on this, uh, if somebody criticizes you, blames you, condemns you, maybe you reflect and see, uh, are some of the things the plus said are true or not? If true, then maybe I correct myself to improve. If not true and so on, then why let another person's speech or actions or whatever trouble your mind? Uh, that is wisdom, uh. And then also the last set, uh, honor and ill fame. Wow, sometimes uh, the person becomes very famous. Uh, 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 those days, uh, I think uh, the Ganam style one uh, was very famous also. I think now, uh, beaten by the K-pop already. Uh, uh, so, not so famous already. And likewise also, prime ministers, presidents also can fall as in present day you see. Uh, presidents of uh, certain countries or prime ministers, Right? So, no longer famous get bad name already. Maybe of some you know, cause and effect. Uh, maybe uh, certain uh, things they did uh, were not wholesome, uh, like corruption and so on. Uh. So, these are the eight worldly conditions or uh, eight worldly wins uh, uh, that will happen according to causes and conditions. So, you must learn to embrace whatever comes uh, in our some saric world uh, with mindfulness and then learn. Then when you have the Dhamma, you'll be able to embrace those things peacefully. Uh, uh, like, you know, even if your loved one passed away, then the Dukkha goes down because you understand this is a natural thing. And wisdom, of course, is the most important aspect that when wisdom arises, you can as embrace the things most, more peacefully. So you find I've written this one. The red one is what I, I wrote uh, as a couplet. Uh. When virtue, tranquility, and wisdom grow steadily, we can cope with the ups and downs of life more peacefully. Now, virtue is the sila of morality. Tranquility is the concentration of the mind, the stillness of the mind, the composure of the mind. And wisdom, you know, right? The discernment, the wisdom growing in the mind. This actually boils down to the Noble Eightfold Path, practicing it, practicing sila, samadhi, panya, virtue, tranquility, and wisdom. Jet ting hui in Mandarin. Then you find you can accept the happenings to you more peacefully. Right? So isn't that wonderful? Uh, this is one great lesson, one of my uh, very important uh, teachings uh, that I fall, try to uh, reflect on and on and practice. Right? So that is number seven already. Now we go on to, uh, this is actually slide number eight already. Now we go on to slide number uh, nine. Uh, this is slide number nine. And this is the great live lesson number eight. Train the mind to be in the now. Don't dwell in the past or worry about the uncertain future. Now, you find this a very important Dhamma teaching uh, 
that will tell us uh, you find uh, a lot of times uh, dukkha comes uh, because of our thinking in the wrong direction. And you find that uh, if the mind always goes to the past and then dwells on the negative things. Uh, of course, if you think about the past and you can learn from the lessons, that's fine. Sometimes we need to uh, we also think of the past. But in this case, it's dwelling on past things uh, which are negative. Uh, and then I'm uh, bringing about what? Regret, remorse, feelings of guilt. Uh, these weaken the mind. So in the past, we might have done certain uh, maybe unskillful actions. So the way to deal with this will be to just note that I've done something unwholesome. Now I will make the resolution not to repeat those wrong actions of the past and then to do more and more good things. So the good karma would not allow those uh, unwholesome ones to come out uh, and the effect. So Whereas other people, uh, you find uh, because we have a bit too much of uh, unwholesome actions of the past. Uh, so the mind uh, is feeling great guilt, uh, conscience, guilty conscience, I can see. And I cannot sleep also. And then they feel regret and so on. Right? So this is going to weaken the mind. And the other type is uh, to go to the future. The future is uncertain. Nobody knows exactly what is going to happen. Even uh, maybe the next moment, you wouldn't know. So this person who has this habit of uh, going to the future, uh, like in, uh, some even consult fortune tellers you know, to know uh, that he's uh, wasting the money. Lah. And what happens? Then you find you get worried uh, due to your, you know, your speculation. Uh, uh, mostly negative things. Uh. So the future is uncertain. Remember, remember, I gave this quotation. Uh, the past is history, right? Just a memory is gone already. The future is a mystery. The past history, really. The future mystery. Don't know what is going to happen. It is uncertainty, which is very true, right? So what really matters is the present. The present. Today, the present, that's why the present is a gift. Uh, it's a very uh, good way of putting a present is a gift. Double meaning for present. So the past is dead and gone. The future is yet to be, be present. Train the mind to be more in the present. Be mindful of uh, what is happening in your mind. Negative thoughts, all this, throw them away. Right? Positive thoughts, welcome them. Sustain them. And then be mindful of the feelings. What sort of feelings you have? When you are mindful and you note them, they will go off. And then you anchor back into the present and body also. Huh? What is happening to the body? So you must be mindful of things that happen in the mind, or your feelings and the body. And this is the four foundations of mindfulness. The fourth one is to contemplate right, on the Dharmala. Uh, but here we are talking about uh, the now. There's one fantastic book uh, that if you have not read, you should read. But it's a bit high. Not, I mean, you can grab it if you have a reasonable command of the English language and you have some Dhammala. It's The Power of Now. It's by Ed Hart Tolle. I read it some years ago. And now you can get the book free even in the internet. Uh, just an e-book. Is very good. It explains very clearly. Actually, you Google, you can get lots of talks on this issue. Right? So this is one great lesson that you must follow in order to cut your dukkha and suffering. Right? Be in the here and now. Huh? Be in the here and now. So when you are in the here and now, huh? you will not feel the negative thing of thinking of the past, or the worry of the future. Uh, so now let us go on to number 10. Number 10, slide number 10, is a great life lesson number 9. Uh, and it pertains to sila or morality. We have to live a virtuous moral life. 
for the mind to be free of regret, remorse, guilt, worry, and fear. That's why, you know, I heard, uh, well, even, I heard, yeah, it was Acham Brahm who said, uh, you send yourself to hell in the sense that uh, your mind uh, is always filled with all those negative things, regret, remorse, guilt, worry, and fear. It weakens the mind. So, you have to develop the mind how to be free from the regret and stuff. We talk about the power of now, you see. And then when you grow in the Dharma with the wisdom, huh, then you have less and less worry and fear. And you know how to deal with feelings of regret, remorse, and guilt. And to avoid these things getting very strong, and very important is sila. Morality is the foundation for any spiritual path. All religions talk about morality, isn't it? Do good, avoid evil, right? Because they know that if you do the unwholesome things, uh, or you can say the bad things, uh, that you don't follow a system of morality, uh, whatever religion, like uh, Islam, Christianity, or Buddhism, or Hinduism, then they will bring the negative consequences. So make sure, like for us, lay Buddhists, we have to keep the precepts well. The five precepts, huh? no killing, no stealing or taking what is not given, no sexual misconduct, no lying and accompanying with that one, no harsh speech, no slander, no gossip. And then you have the, oh, I told you uh, that no sexual misconduct also mentioned already. And then also make sure the mind is free from the greed, hatred, delusion. So when you lead this uh, moral life, uh, Wow, your life will be more peaceful. You can sleep well, and then uh, you will be more happy and joyful, right? So these are the important things, uh, right? So morality is the foundation for spiritual practice. Keeping the moral precepts is important to have mental peace. You see, a person that they always does wrong, it's a matter of time and effect, huh? Uh, you find uh, the mind uh, will create the dukkha for you. I remember uh, reading a uh, mad bird. A uh, uh, mad bird, a uh, lady mad bird, uh, that you took the husband uh, to mar uh, to murder uh, the very good king, you know. Uh. Uh. So, after that, you know, after the king, uh, King Duncan, the king, uh, he was murdered already. Uh. So, she uh, had developed the problems of the mind already. Uh, the feeling of fear, greed, and so on. Uh, uh, to the extent she made, at night she couldn't sleep, you know, she always would think uh, there's blood in the fingers and she said, uh, all the perfumes of every beer cannot sweeten this little finger. Because she always thinks now the blood is still in the fingers. To that extent, in the end, I think she went mad. It's a very, very beautiful play by William Shakespeare, man. but you can watch it on movie and so on. And you learn and reflect. Uh, 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 now, let us go on to slide number 11 now, right? Now, number 11. Number 11, actually, now we are coming to the end. It comes to one of the most important things. It pertains to Bhavana. Bhavana used to be translated as meditation. But actually, the word Bhavana in Pali means mental development or mental cultivation or mental purification. Uh, that is the better meaning for Bawana. So for, you know, many books also talk about Bawana as if it's just meditation. Meditation is just one of that, of the very important things uh, in Bawana that a person has to do. Right? Now, you see, our mind uh, is filled with a lot of all those negative things, uh, mental poisons or defilements. Uh. So it's just uh, so clouded you know, with all the mental poisons, uh, the three terrible ones, a uh, great hatred, delusion, with all the little devils uh, uh, of uh, attachment coming with a greed, craving, ill will, jealousy, hatred, aversion. Anger, hatred, lah, the main one. Lah. And then also the delusion, ignorance, we mentioned already. And then also the conceit and the ego, all this because of the delusion, the ignorance. 
All these uh, cloud the mind. The mind cannot see things as they truly are. To see the truth of all things. To see the natural laws. In order to live happily, we must understand and be able to see it. Even not fully, but to a good extent, the natural laws that govern us. Then we are able to chart our lives peacefully, wisely, then we'll be more happy and joyous, isn't it? So it's very important that we train right, the mind. That's the most important thing uh, of the three dana sila bawana, giving generosity, quite easy. Okay, you say I can practice charity. And then morality, you say I don't do bad. Ma. Uh, but the third one is the most tricky. That is mental development. And that's why it's the most meritorious because it's the most difficult. But you is essential. If you don't practice this, the wisdom cannot arise. And you cannot see the things clearly. That's why you see uh, people uh, with weak minds, uh, they may intellectually know, you know, right? Because they don't train uh, through meditation, learning, contemplate on the Dharma, and then a uh, discussion, and all those factors for mind development, they don't do. They do a lot of charity. Lah, huh? And then uh, morality also, they learn. Lah, right? But the mind is weak because it's not trained. So when the mind is weak, uh, then you find what happens. Even though intellectually you know there are some immoral things, but you still do. That's why you hear of uh, grandfathers uh, raping their granddaughters uh, or raping uh, of uh, men uh, raping the daughters and so on. Uh. You see, they know it's wrong, but yet the mind is weak. So we have to meditate. Uh. Then the mind grows in wisdom. You'll be able to see things more clearly. And the uh, Two types of meditation. I told you mind development uh, involves also listening, understanding uh, the true Dhamma, reflecting on it, discussion, practicing. Uh, so this is a repetition uh, to constantly do the, the things again and again. Uh. So we need to practice both two types of meditation. One is the concentration meditation. To still the mind, to make the mind more composed, more still, more focused. Otherwise, uh, you find the mind is always running everything, you cannot settle. It's just like a container of muddy water uh, that doesn't settle, you cannot see the base. So you need to settle the mind. Then uh, you find you have a glimpse of the, the Buddha nature, your real home. And then uh, when you approach nearer and nearer your home, wow, your mind becomes brighter, clearer, more peaceful, more calm and tranquil. And the other thing is inside meditation. And sometimes you say uh, vipassana. Uh, the other one is called samatha meditation. Uh, stillness meditation, uh, tranquility meditation. And then you have vipassana, which according to Achan Dhamma Buddha, involves the contemplation. Especially as in the four foundations of mindfulness. The fourth one, right? Contemplating, being mindful of the Dhamma to reflect, right? contemplate on the Dhamma, the important Dhamma teachings. Huh? So this way only you'll be able to attain uh, the true happiness, peace, and finally the goal of all Buddhists, ultimate liberation, Nibbana, the end of all Dukkha, to cross the sea of Samsara. Ah, so this is, you can say, uh, uh, the wonderful most important of the great life lessons that we learn. And we practice all these ten, uh, then uh, you are heading in the right direction towards true peace, happiness, and freedom. Now, we have come to the end. We have listed the ten great lessons. And this, I have listed as ten great lessons I have learned and benefited from by reflecting, understanding, and practicing until your mind is transformed more and more in the right direction. Now, let us go on to the final slide. Ah, that is slide number 12 already. So, now, of course, uh, you know, we have to reflect uh, why we must get ourselves motivated 
to learn, understand, contemplate and practice the Dhamma. The teachings of Dhamma are a priceless thing, certainly. No? A treasure beyond measure, greater than all the wealth that you get because your wealth all impermanent. But the Dhamma that you realize uh, will follow you from life to life together with your karma. So you make that resolution, may we learn and practice the sublime Dhamma, the true Dhamma, uh, this sublime Dhamma, you uh, know, excellent Dhamma, the lofty uh, Dhamma, uh, the great interest, passion, enthusiasm. So you do this, uh, then you know you are on the right path. Then you make the resolution also about putting in the effort and diligence. Without the effort, without diligence, you cannot be successful in your spiritual quest. So, with this effort and diligence, ah, you have the confidence. Ah, then you may the aspiration, may we end all misery, which means you become enlightened and cross the sea of samsara and you attain nibbana. Ah, so that is this conclusion of the presentation. And of course, I put these two animated images of the Dhamma Chaka wheel because it represents the turning of the Dhamma wheel. Because the most important thing is the the Dharma, right? Uh, so, before we say sadhu three times, right? I would like to take this opportunity to thank all brothers and sisters in the Dharma and uh, maybe the, all the youth members also, all who have followed this presentation. I would like to thank and say sadhu, you have taken time uh, to put in the effort uh, to have patience and also mindfulness to follow this presentation on this very important topic. So now let us put our palms together and say sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May all of you be well, happy and peaceful. May you continue, continue to strive on in the Dharma until you become enlightened. Take care.